Hello everyone and welcome to a new Unity tutorial on how to set up a field of vision system for a simple guard unit. In this video, we'll work on giving a guard a limited awareness of its surroundings by defining its field of vision, or FOV, and we'll do it both as a circle and as a cone. We'll see how to use this zone as a trigger for the guard's different alertness levels, and we'll also discuss how to use Unity's editor tools to create our own visualization gizmos. As usual, don't forget that you can get all the code and the assets for this tutorial on my GitHub over here. And now without further ado, let's dive into the creation of this FOV system. Alright, so the first thing I'm gonna work on is defining the field of vision of our guard as a circular area around its position. So we're going to assume that we have this basic scene with the unit 3D model in the middle, and we'll set up a simple c script to handle the guard's logic, which here will mostly be about the FOV system and the related attention levels. Let's start by creating the c script and naming it guardmanager.cs, and then we'll slap it on our game object in the scene. Then inside the script, we'll remove the startup code, and instead we'll define a float variable called FOV that represents the radius of the field of vision circle. We'll make it public so that it can be modified easily in the inspector. Now, of course, it would be nice to be able to actually see the FOV in the scene, because for now we have no idea what value we should put in this field. A good way to do this is to use Unity's editor tools and more precisely the handles API. This API comes from the Unity Editor package, and it's a handy technique for adding custom visuals to the scene view, for example to debug a value like our FOV distance. We're going to start simple, and for now we're just going to show the field of vision in read-only mode. So we'll go back to our C-sharp script, import the Unity Editor package, and define a new function in our class called AndroGizmos. This method is available for any monobehavior derived script, and it's executed automatically by Unity to populate the scene view with custom debug visuals. In the function, we can use handles.color to set the color of the debug visuals, such as a transparent green, and then we can use handles.drawSolidDisk to draw a field circular shape around a specific point. More precisely, here we're going to give it the position of our game object as the first parameter, then its up vector as the normal for the disk plane, and finally, the FOV variable as the radius. So after the script has recompiled, you see that we now have a simple debug of our field of vision in the scene view as a green circle at the feet of our guard, and that it's directly linked to the value exposed in the inspector. So if I modify the value over here, the size of the debug shape changes in the scene. That's already pretty cool, but what would be even better would be if we could modify the value of our FOV variable using the gizmo itself instead of having to manually match the inspector field in the inspector to the desired visual in the scene. And again here, Unity's Handles API has us covered. But we actually have to slightly reorganize our scripts to get this running. Up until now, our gizmo has simply been reading the value in our script and visualizing it in the scene as a disk. The problem is that now we want it to actually impact this value and act not only as a getter but also as a setter. In order for the gizmo in the scene to be able to modify the data inside our guard manager script, we can't just rely on the Android gizmos function anymore. This time, we're going to need to create a custom editor script for guard manager class. This is quite easy to do. All we have to do is follow four steps. First, we create a new folder named editor anywhere inside our project. Then inside this folder, we'll make a new c -sharp script, for example one called Guard Manager Editor. Then we'll open the script, import the Unity Editor package at the top, and set that our Guard Manager Editor inherits from the Unity's built-in Editor c -sharp class. Finally, we'll give our class a custom editor attribute, and pass in the name of the script to control via this editor here using the type of built-in function. From this point on, we can use this companion class to define how the elements with our guard manager attached as a component on them will be displayed in the scene or in the inspector, just by overriding some methods from the base editor class. In our case, typically, to be able to interact with custom gizmos, we want to override the onSing GUI method. Inside this method, we can access the actual guard manager instance we're editing 
by casting the target variable that's defined in the parent editor class as a card manager variable. So this card variable now contains a reference to the card manager script containing all the info relative to our unit's logic, meaning, in our case, the field of vision radius. So now we can reproduce the same behavior as before by using the handles API like this. But of course, we can also go one step further and actually use this editor to update the FOV value in real time from the scene view using our gizmo. To do this, the trick is to use another object from the handles API, the scale value handle. This function basically creates a draggable handle and it returns the updated value, so we can use it to directly change the FOV variable content in our guard script reference. This method takes in the following parameters. The current value of the variable, so here it is guard.fov, then the position of the handle, in our case we can compute it based on the current position of a unit by simply offsetting this vector 3 in the forward direction of the guard by the current FOV value, which will essentially place the handle on the border of the FOV circle. Then we have to pass in the rotation of the handle, that will set equal to the one of the unit. And finally we need to set the size and the shape of the handle and the snap amount. Here I'm going to use a sphere handle, but we could also use a cone, a cube, a cylinder, and other built-in cap types from the handles API. Of course, now we should also come back to our guard manager and remove our previous debug visuals and the import of the Unity Editor package, since those have become obsolete. But anyway, with these last few lines, we've basically made it so that in our scene view, any object currently selected that has a guard manager script on it shows up with a green field circular area and a little green sphere at the border to change the value of the field of vision dynamically. Note that we can still modify the FOV variable in the inspector too, and the visuals update, so we've basically set up a two-way editing tool that is really easy to use and that allows us to clearly visualize what our FOV looks like in the scene. Okay, so that's pretty neat, but for now this FOV doesn't do much. So to continue this tutorial, let's see a very basic usage of this FOV as a trigger area for a unit to handle its current alertness level. Okay, now that we have a simple FOV system that we can visualize and edit to our liking, let's discuss how we could use this data in our guard logic to actually impact the gameplay. A very common thing in games is to have the enemy guards somewhat react to the presence of the players, usually by defining some attention levels. So in short, if the player is out of the unit's field of vision, then the unit is calm and goes about in idle mode. But then, as soon as the player enters this perception zone, the unit spots it and starts to wonder what's going on. This alert phase can be more or less instantaneous, but it often results in the guard warning the others about an intrusion or the fight basically starting. Here we won't go that far. We will just take care of these attention levels and see how to switch from one to the other, depending on whether the player is inside the unit's FOV or not. Our goal will be to set up an attention system that works like this. By default, the unit is peaceful. Then, when the player enters its FOV, the unit becomes intrigued. While the player stays in this area, its alert level rises slowly. And if the player goes out of the area, the alert level goes back down. We'll show these changes by turning the FOV debug visual color from green to yellow to red, or the reverse. If the alert level reaches a specific maximum threshold, then the unit becomes alerted, and in a real game, it would start fighting or send a message to its colleagues to tell the player has been spotted. Here we'll just say that the visual is all red. On the other hand, if the player is out of the FOV area and the alert level has gone down to the minimum threshold, then the unit will become peaceful again and go back to its initial state with the green visuals. To implement all of this, we have to do a few things. So we'll go back to our guard manager script and define the three alert stages of our unit as an enum. Peaceful, intrigued and alerted. And then we'll create new variables with the current alert stage of the guard using this enum and its current alert level as a float in the 0-100 range. So here, our minimum threshold to go back to peaceful is 0, and our maximum threshold to go to alerted is 100. So this alert level float will mostly be useful in the intrigued stage. But anyway, we'll say that in the awake, the alert stage is set to peaceful, and the alert level is set to 0. 
Now we need to have a way of setting the right alert stage for units, increment and decrement the alert level, and use the alert stage and alert level values to change the color of our debugs. This last part is actually the easiest, so let's start with that. We'll go back to our guard manager editor, and at the top where we hardcoded the green color, we said that if the guard is currently at the intrigued alert stage, then the color will be a blend between green and red, depending on the renormalized alert level variable. Be careful because this slurp value here has to be in the 0 1 range, but our alert level is in the 0 100 range, so we need to divide by 100. Then, if the guard is currently at the alert stage, we'll just force the color to be red. And now, if we play around with the values in the inspector, we set our visuals indeed update depending on the current alertness level of the guard. Except that we obviously don't want to change these parameters manually. In truth, they shouldn't really appear in the inspector, because users shouldn't really modify them by hand. Instead, we're going to handle this via code. So for this last part of the logic, the point is to check whether our player, which I have added here in the scene as another 3D model, is inside or outside the FOV. The easiest method to perform this check is to use Unity's physics tool, and in particular the physics.overlapsphere built-in method. This means that our player game object needs to have a physics collider on it, for example here a simple cube shape. And I'll also make sure to give this game object a specific tag, player, which is readily available in any Unity project, and that will make it easy to verify whether the object we spotted was indeed the player or not. Be careful though, the object with the tag has to be the one with the physics collider in order for the check to work. So then in our guard manager script, in the update method, we use physics.overlapsphere to get references to all the colliders that are around the unit inside its field of vision radius, like this. If this list isn't empty, it means that we have found at least one possible target, and we can check its tag against the built-in player tag that is applied to our player game object. This will allow us to know if the player is currently in the FOV radius, and update our current alert state accordingly. This alert state update will basically go through each possible alert stage, and in each case, check for the various conditions or thresholds to optionally switch to the other stages. And that's it! If we start a game now, then we can move our player object around and see that as soon as it enters the FOV of the guard, the alert variables in the inspector change, and the color of the visuals updates accordingly to show that the guard is first intrigued, and quickly goes to the alerted stage before coming back down to peaceful if we get away. So here we are, we've now got a basic FOV system that is easy to visualize and to update, and that can be used to feed the right data to a physics-based check for some alertness levels. As a little improvement, let's wrap up by saying how to further customize this FOV by also allowing the users to define the vision angle and restrain the FOV to a cone. In terms of data, using a conic FOV instead of a circular one only requires that we had a single variable, the angle that can go from 0 to 360 degrees. Then in our custom editor, we can replace our call to draw solid disk by one to draw solid arc, which lets us pass in some additional parameters to define the from vector to draw the arc from, and the angle of the arc to draw. If we go back to the editor and reduce our angle in the inspector, we see that the debug of the FOV indeed shrinks to only cover a portion of the disk. But it would be cool if the FOV cone stayed in the forward direction of the unit, with as much area on both sides of our sphere marker. This way, we would have the cone in front of the guard at all times, instead of this offsetted area. To do this, we just have to play around with the from vector. We'll basically multiply it by a quaternion that rotated by half the angle, with a minus sign to rotate it the right way. Be sure to use the angle axis of the up vector of the game object's transform to properly keep the overall rotation. If we try this again, we see that the cone is now properly oriented in front of the guard, and we can shrink or grow it from 0 to 360 degrees to limit the FOV of our unit. Last but not least, we need to reapply the same limitations to the alert state update computation because for now we've only changed the visuals, and so the player will still trigger a warning for the guard, even if it is out of this conic area. 
At the moment, only the radius is taken into account for state update computation. Luckily, this is again quite straightforward to change. Let's go back to our guard manager script and add a bit of constraints to the physics check we do in the update. Basically, in addition to going through the overlap sphere and the tag verification, we are also going to compute the angle between the forward direction of the guard and the direction to the player. And if this angle is below the FOV cone angle, then we'll set that our player is in the FOV radius. Because the player can be either on the left or the right of the unit, we have to use an absolute value. And because of the little offsets we added before, we also have to divide our angle by 2 to get back the right value. But anyway, with these few modifications, our new conic FOV system is now all set and ready. If we restart the game and drag our player around, we see that the alert state updates only trigger when the player game object is below the FOV radius and in the right direction, and that it is indeed inside the cone shape defined by our FOV angle. So there you have it. You've now got a basic example of a field of vision implementation for little guard units that can handle both circular and conic shapes, and that can be easily tweaked directly in the scene view thanks to custom debugging gizmos. And with all that said, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned a few things to creating a basic FOV system in Unity C Sharp. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you have other ideas of Unity tricks that you'd like to learn, don't hesitate to leave a comment. As always, thanks a lot for watching and take care.